Well, hello there, everybody. Happy New Year. And welcome back to Tuesday Teaching Tips with Sally. I'm afraid I fell off a bit in December because I went down with a cold, so that was the end of that. So um, my apologies for that. But as I say, Happy New Year and welcome to the brand new world of 2020. Now, today I'm going to start off these Tuesday Teaching Tips um, well, with a bit, of, a bit of a memory trip, really. And we were all very sad in the piano teaching community to hear back last month of the death of Forrest Kinney. Now, I was fortunate enough to meet Forrest on several occasions. He came over to the UK and I also saw him when he was over in America. And he was one of the most generous hearted, um, wonderful, uh, beautiful spirits um, that we had in the piano teaching world. and. I don't know whether you've heard of him. I don't know whether you've been lucky enough to meet him. I don't know what the situation is with you. But today's Tuesday teaching tip is to say, go and find some of the books that Forrest has printed. And I'm going to put the link down here when I finish this this uh, this podcast and, and start to use them because they are truly wonderful. And for teachers, they give you such confidence with improvisation because what Forrest has done that I really loved and I, I found a kindred spirit here is he's kind of broken down the elements of improvisation into a way and presented them in a way that every single teacher can use them instantly in their lessons. So the books that I'm particularly going to talk about today are these books, the Pattern Play books, and I'll talk about those in a moment, but you have to order those I think still. Um, but you can go straight online and you can download this series which is called Create First. And that is full of absolutely wonderful ideas, really simple, nothing to be scared of at all in improvisation. But I want to just take you back a little bit to I think it was 2014, something like that, when Forrest came over to London. And I was really fortunate enough to spend two days with him um, in the company of some other curious piano teachers, even pre-curious piano teachers, to be honest. And we w we went to the studio of my friend and colleague, Lucinda MacKeown. And as I say, we spent two wonderful days with Forrest making music. And the this, I think it was particularly Pattern Play 1 and Pattern Play 2. And when I show you the inside, you'll see that it is full of the post-it notes that I wrote at the time when uh, Forrest was, was doing this. And he got us all up and playing on the piano, of course. And there's nothing like actually seeing the person who wrote the book to actually explain what's going on on the page, is there? And you can see, uh, as I say, I've got all these post-it notes. Um, I mean, for example, on the very, at the beginning, I've got this lovely quote from Forrest, because he says, if you find yourself begging students to do something, it is often because the music is missing. Okay, I think I need to remember that as well. If you find yourself begging students to do something, it's often because the music is missing. And we're getting into too much detail for the students to really want to engage with. Um, and he was very much into this idea of just playing, just playing, nothing else. Let the learning come out of the playing. I want to particularly, as I say, I've got all these all these post-it notes, as you can see, but I want to share one that I just love, I and mean, I love so many of these. But this one's called Persia. This one's called Persia in book one. And the way Forrest presents them is he uh, presented them with a duet version. So you can instantly make beautiful music with even a beginner. He gives you the ingredients to do it. So you've got a bass part over here, you've got a treble part over here with notes suggested, and then you can go on and create it in, make it into a solo version if you want to send a student home, or you can create trios and quartets. So I'm going to focus on the duet version of Persia, although it's just me, I appreciate that. And what he does is he gives you a pattern to work with. So all music is made out of patterns, hence pattern play, and the pattern in this case it's just an open fifth, like that. But he also puts with it a little bit of the Egyptian scale. Yeah. And you can just repeat that, add some pedal, and then 
when you get a bit fed up with it, you need to go on vacation as far as school's out. that's all you really need to do is keep up that really steady rhythm that kind of throbbing kind of drumming rhythm there and change the pattern of vacation also on the first page there are suggestions for how you can vary that left hand and he's not saying do it this way he said here's some suggestions so you can come up with your own version of it um you know ideas as starting points and then for your pupil i can remember him talking about rabbit's ears for this and you need to get these two fingers out for rabbit's ears because you want the pupils to be playing on the black notes here and here i can see it. we can't quite see this i'm not sure i can quite change my uh and go down a little bit more. whether that will work or not so i'll do it your two rabbit ears and you get them to play just up and down those two notes and it's really you know very simple but imagination in, in words and all sorts of different ways um i started to think about magic carpet rides and i i you know, even produced a little sort of sheet to to help them and um of course with with those of you that are uk based and using the current grade one syllabus what have we got in there we've got the egyptian level haven't we exactly the same idea Introduce the piece. Get some improvisation before you actually. Yeah, it's actually got the same ingredients. It's got open myths and it's got that melody in the right hand. So lovely way to that. But I want to finish with one more thing, one more little trick that Forrest had, obviously, and that's such fun. Um, and he would take. You can only do this on a grand piano, I have to say. Um, but take. A sheet of paper, I'm going to use this, and put it down the bottom end where you're going to be playing. I'm just putting this on top of the uh, on top of the strings. So that's the first bit, first sound effect, and then take a couple of metal pens. Yeah, so I've got a, a metal pen and a pencil with a metal end, and put those around the melody. So it's around there. And let's see what that does, shall we? A, a little bit of right in place yet. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Prepare down and eat your heart out. So all of a sudden we have. Parents. 
parents who, who might be sitting in the room and you do that and the child comes in and you do that with them and they're sort of going, what's going? What's happening? What's happening? It's a lot of fun. And surely playing the piano should be a lot of fun. And as far as would say, play the piano. Don't talk about it. Play the piano and be playful at the piano. So if you're not yet familiar with the work of the wonderful and much, much, um, really sort of um, much missed already, uh, Forrest Kinney, please do go and investigate. I'm going to put the link down below as soon as this is all loaded up and everything. And, and download his Create first. Uh, try out his, maybe order pattern play wherever you are in the world and start doing it with your students because actually they deserve it and you deserve a bit of fun as well. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I can see there's lots of people there. Um, Hi Alta and Hal Marion and um, Karen and Kath. And Kath was one of the people who joined me uh, in the studio, I think, with, with Forrest. So fond memories of the wonderful Forrest Kinney. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye for now.